Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. And thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for wanting to be with us and teaching us how to want to be with you. We pray now that you would guide our hearts and our minds as we learn how to live lives walking by faith that are pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. I'm reading the King James Version for a change. That's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. And it reads, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the world uh, worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. And today I want to talk about without faith, pleasing God is impossible. Without faith, pleasing God is impossible. You can forget it. Now, faith is the greatest power in all the entire world. Faith is the inherent, natural, fundamental, basic, built-in, God-given power to believe the Word of God and to act upon it. This week, we're building a foundation to look at the lives of some biblical characters as examples of using faith as a major part of life to please God. It's apparent that we do many things that are supposed to please God. And if any of our many actions are not packaged in faith, then our actions are worthless because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith is measured out to us each, each of us daily, just as mercy is brand new to us each day. God measures the exact amount of faith that we need to do all that it takes to please him on a daily basis. How we handle every situation, how we make every choice, how we treat every, and I do mean every person uh, that we meet during the day, how we overcome every obstacle, how we submit to authorities, how we achieve what's impossible to us. The faith that we need is supplied before we do anything, before we roll out of bed, before we take the first step, before we speak the first word, before we use any of our five senses, our God, who neither sleeps nor slumbers, has been measuring out the right amount of faith that we need to do everything before we even open our eyes to behold a brand new day. Romans chapter 12, verse uh, 3 says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. God knows the plans that he has for us and the absolute amount of faith that we will need to live out his plans. This chapter, uh, chapter 11 of uh, the book of Hebrews, introduces the final section of the epistle of Hebrews. That's, that's in chapter 11 through 13, which is called the superior principle which is faith. The fact that Jesus Christ is 
a superior person as depicted in Hebrews chapter 1 through 6, and that he exercises a superior priesthood as found in Hebrews chapter 7 through 10, this ought to encourage us to put all of our trust in him. The readers of this epistle were being tempted to go back into Judaism and to put their faith in Moses. The disciples also, remember, made the decision to leave Jesus and go back. John chapter 6, verse uh, 64 through 68 reads, But there are some of you, Jesus says, that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. He said, Therefore I say unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him by my father. Verse 66 says, From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you go away also? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou alone hast the word of eternal life. Nobody but Jesus has the word, but not only does he have the word, he is the word of life that spoke the world and everything in it into existence. The same word was made flesh and gave us the grace that we are saved by through faith. Can I say that again? This same word that was made flesh gave us the grace that we are saved by through faith. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15, this is the message version, says, we look at his son and see the God who cannot be seen. We look at this son and see God. We look at Jesus and see the creator of all things and the owner of everything. Psalms 24 and, uh, well, the 24, if I'm going to read the whole chapter, uh, or whole Psalms, 24, uh, number of Psalms, it says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hills of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. All ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, all ye gates. Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. So now the question is, how do we, and I do emphasize we, because we are tempted and yield. How do we show the risen Christ in our daily living and please God? How do we show his priesthood over us? The one who was tempted in all of the ways that we are, and yet he never yielded to that temptation. 
How do we show our faith that is measured out to us in the one that is our present help, our very present help in trouble? The answer is by faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 through 11, King James Version again says, In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believeth not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded that the light to shine out of darkness has shined into our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal bodies. Those that were and are tempted to go back, their confidence was in the visible things of this world, not in the invisible realities of God. Instead of going on to perfection or maturity, they were going back to perdition or waste. In Hebrews chapter 11, all Christians are called to live by faith. In it, the writer discusses two important topics relating to faith. The first one is the description of faith. This is not a definition of faith, but a description of what faith does and how it works. The true biblical faith is not blind confidence or a manufactured hope so feeling. Neither it is, is it an intellectual assent to a doctrine. It is certainly not believing in, in spite of evidence. That would be more superstition than faith. True Bible faith is confidence, obedience to God's word in spite of circumstances and consequences. I think I need to say that again. True Bible faith is confident obedience to God's word in spite of circumstances and consequences. Listening to that last sentence let me read it even again so it can soak into our minds and in our, into our hearts. True Bible faith is confident obedience to God's word in spite of circumstances and in spite of consequences. This faith operates very simply. God speaks, we hear his word, and then we trust his word and act upon it no matter what the circumstances are or what the consequences might, might be. The circumstances may seem impossible to us, but the consequences 
frightens us. And, and, and even the unknown frighten us. And usually it's the unknown that paralyzes us. But we obey God's word just the same and believe him to do what is right and what is best for us. The unsaved of the world does not understand true Bible faith probably because it sees so little faith in action in the church today. There was a cynical writer, H.L. Mencken. He defined faith as illogical belief in the occurrences of the impossible. The world fails to realize that faith is only as good as its object. And the object of our faith is God. Our faith is in God. Faith is not some feeling that we manufacture. It is our total response to what God has revealed in his word. Three words in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 3, summarizes what true Bible faith is. Substance, evidence, and witness. The word translated substance means literally to stand under, to support. Faith is to a Christian what a foundation is to a house. It gives confidence and assurance that he will stand. God will stand by his word. A house is either built on pillars as a foundational uh, part or uh, concrete uh, slabs have what's called uh, footings that support, that stands under the foundation to support it. It's not like sand but it's a solid rock. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. So we might say, faith is the confidence of things hoped for. When a believer has faith, it is God's way of giving him confidence and assurance that what God has promised us will be experienced. The word evidence simply means conviction. This is the inward conviction from God that what he has promised, he will perform. perform. The presence of God-given faith in one's heart is conviction enough that he will keep his word. Witness, in the King James Version, uh, simply means to obtain a good report. Stick a pen in that for next week, in the next few weeks. Witness means to obtain a good report. It occurs not only in verse 2, but twice in verse 4, once in verse 5, and once in verse 39. The summary of Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, calls this list of men and women so great a cloud of witnesses. They were witnesses to us because God witnessed to them. In each example cited, God gave witness to that person's faith. This witness was his divine approval of their, witness, their, live, their lives and their ministries. And next week, we will look at Cain and Abel and focus on how God regarded or looked at their lives and their actions. One God was not pleased with. Cain, 
and the other God was pleased with, Abel. God spoke of his son, Jesus, and, 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 and it shows how he saw him. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus became a living sacrifice who died for our sins. They buried him in a borrowed tomb. And in three days, he rose from the tomb, the grave with all power, not black power, not white power, but dynamo power, divine power in his hand. And next week, we will start our journey on biblical characters that walked by faith and pleased God. Uh, I think I took a little bit more time than I usually do, and I pray that uh, you will uh, uh, see it as I do, something that was necessary. I, I would have cut if I could, but I dare not cut anything. So I pray that God will bless you with this message in a powerful way, and that your faith and your desire to live lives that are pleasing in his sight will increase. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word. We pray now that you will allow it to come alive in our lives, that we will walk by faith and not by sight, that we will walk uh, close to you, so close to you that one day we won't be here, but we will be with you because we walked by faith with you here. We ask that you were to just Make your word become such that we can apply it in our daily living. In Jesus' powerful and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Until the next time, be blessed and be a blessing. And be safe. Bye-bye.